Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today we're going to be continuing with the NumPy tutorial series in Python by looking at how you can slice arrays. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to move you onto the screen. Okay, so we're in PyCharm as usual and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at slicing arrays, as I mentioned. So we've just added a comment up here to say this is tutorial 3 in the NumPy series and here we've just imported the relevant modules and again if you're unfamiliar with how to install NumPy then I have mentioned how to do it on the first tutorial video so we're going to get started straight away we're going to say slicing one dimensional arrays so again if you watch my previous video what you'll notice is as you increase the number of dimensions in a given array the slicing and the indexing changes notation so instead of just recalling one element we have to recall given dimensional elements and we're just going to explore that a little bit further with slicing. So we're going to create a one dimensional array and we're going to call it one dim and it's going to be np.array and it's going to be one, two, three, four, five as usual. And we're just going to put here this is a one dimensional array. Okay. Now, similar to the previous video, we can take indexing and the way that we did that was we said one dim and if we say zero, and we click run that will recall the first element so if you're unfamiliar we always begin with zero we don't start with one you must begin with zero when you index and zero corresponds to the first element in a given list or a string or an array in this sense so what we can do is instead of just recalling one element we can recall a chunk of elements so say we want one two and three what we would do is we would start with zero because zero corresponds to the first element then we would put a colon and then we would say, okay, so we want the zeroth element, the first element, the second element. Now, the way that slicing works in Python, it will take this value here, it will return it, and up until whatever index we put in here, it will return that index minus one and the element that corresponds to that. So it's a little bit confusing to get your head around. But if we just say here, zero to three, and we run this, we get one, two, three. So you may think, well, why does that not return four? Because we're recalling zero, one, two, and three. So you'd expect it to recall four elements. But this here, it will return this minus one. It will take this, which it corresponds to the first element, which is this. Then it will take this value here, minus one from it, and then take that value. So here we'll have two, which is zero, one, two. So that's why we get three. Okay, and similarly, if we put four in here, we would hope to get up to four and we click run. Perfect. So we'll just say here, this will return elements from the first element or zeroth element in this sense. This will turn elements from the first element to the fourth element. And we'll just put one, two, three, four, just so you remember. Okay. And again, we can kind of extend this further and we can say, let's do it from one to three. And I just need to put a one dim in there because <laughs> I've forgotten it. Pop it there and we'll click run. Okay, so that returns this element. So one and that index corresponds to the second element. It will take this index minus one, which is two, which is zero, one, two, which is three. And there we go, two, three, perfect. So we'll say this will return elements from the second element to the third element. And we'll just put here, two, three, okay. So something else that is a little bit of a shortcut is we can simply say print, and I'm just gonna drop this down a line. We can say print one, dim print one dim and we can put a colon now if we run this click run it returns the whole array so what this does here if there's nothing written here it will automatically python will automatically assume you're asking for the zeroth element so the first element and the last so five so we'll, you know we run this and we get the entire array back so if i was to put in here one and we click run. Notice how the zeroth element is removed. And that's because we start from one, which corresponds to the second element, 
and then we go all the way up to the end which are these values here and similarly we can get rid of this and we can say for and we'll run and what this does it takes the zero which corresponds to the first element takes it all the way up to four minus one which is three which corresponds to the fourth element so this is a way of being able to you know instead of writing zero here we could literally have taken zero out this is a way of being able to you know recall values from the start and then take it up to as far as we want or take it from the end and you know go as far as we want left so that's a little bit of a way of being able to recall them without having to input values so i'll just put it here this will return the entire array unless we input some extra values and by extra values i just mean values in here or in here okay okay so what we can actually do is we can also recall elements that go up by a step each time so i'll say we can recall elements in steps and the way that we do that is we'll say print one dimension and we'll say okay let's start from zero which is the first element let's take it all the way up to hmm, let's say the hmm, let's say the fourth element okay and then we'll put another colon and we'll say two so what this is doing here the first bit is exactly what we've done up here so it will find you know how, how the given elements in an array in an in an array and then this extra number here is how many steps it will increment by each time. So we'll run this Python file and notice we get 1 and 3. And that's because we take 0 to 4, which obviously we know we already have, we've printed it, is this here. And instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, it will go 1, 3. And that's because it is incrementing by 2 each time. So similarly, if I was to put 5 here, and what we expect this to do is to go 1 to 3, to five because it increments by two each time okay so that's how we kind of recall elements in steps and how we slice them in steps and now we can extend it further by considering two-dimensional array slicing okay so so we'll create a two-dimensional array and we're going to say np.array and let's say we'll have what did we have originally we had one two three four okay so we'll have one two three and then we'll have four five six okay so we have a two-dimensional array now if we say print to dim and we get the open brackets again the square brackets again and we say one and then we say zero to two and we run this just think what this is going to do for a second okay so we'll run and it gives you four and five now what this is doing is the first value here will give you you know the given element so one gives you this here if this was zero it would give you this element here and then within that given dimension it will return a slice and that slice is four and five because we have zero and that is the first element all the way up to two minus one which is one so that corresponds to the second element which is this here so that's why we have four and five so we'll say here this will return a slice from the first element to the second element from the second dimension and that gives you four. Oh, four and five okay okay so we can extend this further by instead of just recalling you know one element we can actually get python to return given elements from both of these lists here so we're going to create another two-dimensional array. So we'll say 2dim and we'll call it 2 this time. And we'll say np array. And it's going to be similar to what we had before. So I'm just going to copy this. But we're going to add an extra element. So we're going to have 7, 8, 9. Now if I say, I'll just put here creating another two-dimensional array. And if I say here print 2dim2. Two and we'll have 0 to 2 of 0 to 2 and then we're going to have 0 okay now if I run this we get 1 and 4 so what this is doing here this will tell python what elements it wants so which original elements we want so of these elements here 
So we've said zero and two, which will return the first element and the second element. And then within these elements that we've asked Python to kind of recall, we want the zeroth element, which will be one and four. And that's why we get one and four. Okay. Now, if I was to change this to three, because we've changed it to three, we would expect this to assign these, all of them, so all these original elements. And then within those elements, we want the zeroth element. So one, four, and seven. So if we run, we get one, four, and seven, like we expected. Okay. So that's something really nice is how you can, instead of just getting one element and then recalling a slice within that element, you can recall all the elements or a set number of the elements and recall given elements within those elements. Okay. And similarly, we could put one to two. And if we run, it will give you a 2D array because that is saying, okay, from zero to three. So that's all of these elements here. We want to return a slice from the first element to the second element. So we have one, two, four, five, seven, eight. And that's why we get this here. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to say here from all elements, index zero to index two. Okay. So from all the elements, which are these, we're going to slice from index zero, which is this to index two, which is this. Okay, perfect. And again, you know, you can change this to zero, which will return a given element, not a slice, but because we're working in slices today, that's what we'll do here. Okay, perfect. So that is how we can slice one dimensional and two dimensional arrays. They can get a little bit confusing, but just if you keep practicing, um, your head will eventually get around them. But that is the video today. The next video in this NumPy tutorial series will be on the view and copy commands. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that tutorial. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, then please like, subscribe and comment. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I do a lot of stuff on social media, especially Instagram. So just ask my followers what content you want to see next. So make sure you go follow me on social media and I will see you all in the next video.